Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my video guide on proving the Riemann hypothesis through newly discovered mathematics related to gamma and zeta function. Myself Sujit Ghosh from Kolkata, India and I am a certified accountant who has been keeping the books of accounts always reconciled for last 20 years, and I plays a lot with numbers in my financial analysis which actually brought me to this alien world. In this video, we will explore the fascinating concept of the Riemann hypothesis and the role the zeta function and gamma function plays in the proof of Riemann hypothesis. So, let's dive right in. It is well accepted that Riemann hypothesis is the holy grail of mathematics, proving the Riemann hypothesis would have profound implications for number theory and prime number distribution. It would provide us with a deeper understanding of the distribution of prime numbers, and potentially unlock new mathematical insights. However, as of now, the Riemann hypothesis remains unproven, and mathematicians continue to explore different approaches to extend the domain of the zeta function and shed light on this intriguing problem, before we delve into extending the domain of the Riemann hypothesis and my journey of proving the hypothesis. Let's first understand what the hypothesis is all about. The Riemann hypothesis is a conjecture proposed by the German mathematician Bernard Riemann in 1859. It deals with the distribution of prime numbers and their connection to the zeros of the Riemann zeta function. The Riemann zeta function is a complex valued function defined for complex numbers s with a real part greater than 1. It is defined as the sum of the reciprocals of the positive integer raised to the power of minus s. Mathematically, zeta of s can be expressed as 1 to the power minus s, plus 2 to the power minus s, plus 3 to the power minus s, and so on, up to infinity. To extend the domain of the Riemann zeta function, we make use of a concept called analytic continuation. Analytic continuation allows us to extend the definition of a function to a larger domain. In the case of the zeta function, we can extend it to the entire complex plane except for the point s equal to 1, where it has a simple pole. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The Riemann hypothesis states that all non-trivial zeros of the zeta function lie on a critical line in the complex plane, which is defined by the equation real of s equal to half. By extending the domain of the zeta function, we can explore these non-trivial zeros and attempt to prove the Riemann hypothesis. There are several techniques used to extend the domain of the zeta function. Some of these techniques include functional equations, integral representations, and the use of contour integration. However, I use none of these techniques. I visualized the problem cyclically and made a nice garland of zeta values with interwoven flowers from various branches of gamma function, pi function, my own delta function, their harmonic conjugates, all branching out from two trees namely unified factorial tree, and unified zeta tree. When I started reading about number theory, I wondered that if prime number theorem is proved based on Riemann zeta function, then what is left? The biggest job is done. I questioned myself why zeta function cannot be defined at 1, why the pole cannot be removed. Calculus has got its own set of rules for checking convergence of any infinite series, but sometime, especially when we are encapsulating infinities into unity, those rules may fall short to check the convergence of infinite series. In spite of that Euler was successful proving his sum to product form and calculated zeta values for some numbers by hand only. Later Leopold Kronecker proved and interpreted Euler's formulas is the outcome of passing to the right-sided limit of s. I decided I will stick to great-grandpa Euler's approach in attacking the problem, and I will investigate further how zeta function blows up to infinity at 1, and renormalize the infinity introducing some new mathematical tools which may be missing now in the present context. The job was not easy, but I believed easier gets going. I took all my initial failures easily. Failure provides valuable lessons and insights. I treated it as an opportunity to revise my approach, identify weaknesses, and refine my understanding of the number line. As I belong to an altogether different world, I could not engage with other mathematicians and researchers to exchange ideas, gain feedback, and find encouragement. As a self-taught man would proceed, I broke the problem down into smaller, bite-sized pieces like poles of gamma function was creating problems for me. An additional factorial function was required to make a twisted pair with the gamma function. 
an alternate functional equation was necessary to remove the pole of the zeta function and so on. Every step forward I recognized that all the problem I had, had also its solution too. I took regular breaks to rest, rejuvenate, and come back to apply some freshly brewed ideas. I celebrated myself on every progress I made. Regardless of how small my achievement was, I realized that knowledge I had gained. And the insights I had discovered in solving the previous problem was opening new doors to achieve my ultimate goal. Let me take you. Through the summary of the results I got. Riemann hypothesis stands proved in three different ways of three different level of complexity. To prove Riemann hypothesis from the functional equation, concept of delta function and periodic harmonic conjugate of both gamma and delta functions are introduced similar to gamma and pi function. Other two proofs are derived using Euler's formula and elementary algebra. Analytically continuing zeta function to an extended domain, poles and zeros of zeta values are redefined. Other prime conjectures like Goldbach conjecture, twin prime conjecture etc. are also proved in the light of new understanding of primes and numbers as a whole. Numbers are proved to be three-dimensional as worked out by Hamilton with his four-dimensional quaternions. Imaginary number iota is defined to be natural logarithm of two. Logarithm of negative and complex numbers are redefined using extended number system. Factorial of negative and complex numbers are redefined using delta function and periodic harmonic conjugate of both gamma and delta functions. Now let me take you through a detour of my whole journey so far. Being an accountant, I have nothing to do with science in my daily life. Believe me first time I searched internet about what the contemporary science says about the universe, was, the Christmas Eve, year 2012 when I was working in Kurdistan region of Iraq and there was a hoax around the world that world is going to end by the 31st of December, 2012. Although the hoax was not scientific, I felt eager to know the truth. I found myself devoid of contemporary scientific understanding, therefore I started to acquire knowledge about the scientific truth. I started reading Wikipedia articles about physics which subject I was weak in my school days. This was the first time when I found the pie chart of the composition of the universe contained 69% dark energy. 26% dark matter, 5% normal matter. My senses didn't agree, I got the sense there must be something very wrong at the very root level, it cannot be. Completely true. Time passed away, in 2015, during Syrian crisis, I came back to Kolkata, my home city. My elder son started going to third. Standard in his school. One fine day I was searching the internet for some worksheets on fractions for my son's practice. I didn't find much harder problems in the internet so I thought I'll make something randomized for him in Excel. I realized that numbers I use the obvious way in my day-to-day -day life was not so simple. With all my Excel knowledge which I suppose was not at least beginner level, I took four hours of time to figure out that to set some fractional math problems for kids undergoing third standard. I must divide any random number by its bigger multiples of 5 so that the resultant proper fraction does not land on a recurring 1. I had a guess that because we are using the decimal system so 5 is the midpoint, dividing by multiples of 5 always lands on some proper fraction. It must be trivial. Another day when I first time came to know about fine structure constant, and its dimensionless approximate fractional value of 1 upon 137, I thought it was almost half of well-known Charles constant ideal gas ratio of 1 upon 273, some astonishing way I could not figure it out. I satisfied myself saying that it may be due to the same midpoint theory I developed myself. Anyway, time kept on passing and in my spare time I kept on reading about mind-boggling Einstein's special relativity, general relativity as well as quantum mechanics and its bizarre consequences. I wished if I could solve one of the unsolved mysteries of physics. Another day I was going through the Wikipedia listing of unsolved physics problems and I saw another link to list of unsolved maths problems. Here at least the list was shorter, I had a glance of all the seven millennium prize problems and I stopped at the Riemann hypothesis. Based upon my self-constructed midpoint theory and its presumed oversimplified connection to Riemann hypothesis, I wondered why such an elegant statement remained unsolved for more than 150 years. I picked it for myself as if I came to earth to solve the Riemann hypothesis. I had to start from the scratch. 
I started with Euler's version of Zeta function in the year of 2019. Just by using induction method similar to Euler's I figured it out why on earth the Riemann hypothesis should be true. But my initial elementary proof of 2019 got rejected. Covid attacked the world in the year 2020, I lost my job and got plenty of time in lockdown to solve Riemann hypothesis. I understood that the initial elementary proof lacked new mathematics. I started accumulating the pitfalls of contemporary mathematics which may be the reason we don't have the tools for Riemann hypothesis, as famous mathematician Terence Dow once said in an interview. I saw that the imaginary number iota has kept all the mathematicians as well as the physicists in the world busy, or rather say eluded in its world of illusion. My initial elementary proof demanded half-unit circle in contrary to the concept of unit. Circle. I had figured out how to bring a dual unit circle inside the well-known concept of unit circle, but that was not enough. I needed to justify it further. In spite of the fact that hardcore complex analysis was not my cup of tea, I dived into it. I checked whether my work violated any of the principles of complex analysis and I found none. Still I got nothing other than rejections. I came back to the Riemann's functional equation to work out something more rigorous. I came to know about a particular theorem in analytic continuation complex analysis known as harmonic conjugate theorem, which says that if a function is analytic around some region then there must be a complex conjugate of the original function. Already I have seen that if I can tweak the Riemann's functional equation little bit to replace the gamma function with some equivalent, which may not be undefined at one then I have a chance to eliminate the pole of the function. I knew that I was going to challenge the well-known divergence of the harmonic series as proved by Nicole Orsman centuries back. The only hope I had that I am also bringing a new zeta function which can spiral out cyclically to form a zeta function continuum, and these cycles take the place holder for infinity. Soon I realized that I have opened the Pandora's box bringing more and more problems. To find the solution to these novel problems I had to reopen Euler's gamma function and make a variant of the original gamma function, which I named delta function. Still I could not complete the circle. To complete the circle, I had to dive into the negative domain of factorial functions to introduce two more functions, which were periodic conjugate of the original gamma function and the newly discovered delta function. Now with this fantastic for factorial functions I could extend the domain of factorials to negative numbers, and the domain of zeta function to negative even numbers. I assembled everything together, and let it go to see that the functional equation for my harmonic conjugate zeta function has the most wanted proof for Riemann hypothesis. Yes, I did it. Three cheers to pi by three angle which took me to higher dimension and brought me the proof. Although one ray of pi by four angle traverses through the fourth dimension also and has got a disk in the unit sphere also, I leave this branch for other people who may have interest to work with pi further. Because of popularity of calculus, algebraically speaking Euler's numbers E became more popular than pi whereas pi is mostly used to understand geometry, specifically geometry of cycles. I have hinted in my paper that pi can also be a base to complex logarithm and with hyperbolic numbers in its exponent. We get the conjugate form of Euler formula e to the power i pi equals minus 1 which shall look like pi to the power j, e equals minus 1. I was looking for some natural signatures to get a confirmation of my novel idea. I don't have any access to astronomical data to cross-check, so I searched Google for 60 degree latitude. The 60 degree latitude line runs parallel to the equator at a latitude of 60 degrees north and south. One notable example is the Southern Ocean, which surrounds Antarctica. As the 60 degree south latitude line traverses through this area, it encounters vast expanses of open water with no landmasses which is kind of a zero like the zeta zeros. In the northern hemisphere also, the 60 degree north latitude line passes through the Arctic Ocean. While there are numerous islands within the Arctic Circle, such as Greenland, Svalbard, and the Canadian Arctic Archipelago, the specific stretch along the 60 degree north latitude may cross areas of open water, particularly during warmer months when sea ice melts. It's important to note that the presence or absence of land along the 60 degree latitude line can vary due to factors such as tides, seasonal ice formation, and climate conditions. However, in general terms, 
these regions are characterized by expansive stretches of open water with no significant landmasses directly intersecting the 60-degree latitude line. After getting at least one natural signature as above, I try to extend it to more generalized conditions like the whole galaxy, the whole universe to solve dark matter and dark energy problem. The coincidence of dark energy percentage being equal to the natural logarithm of 2 is an intriguing notion that arises from the numerical proximity between the current estimate of the ratio of the energy density of dark energy to the critical density of the universe in the field of cosmology. Dark energy refers to the hypothetical form of energy that is believed to be responsible for the observed accelerated expansion of the universe. Its nature and properties are not yet well understood, making it a subject of ongoing scientific investigation. Just like the critical line of zeta function is responsible for infinitude of primes and therefore number system, the dark energy also gets all its energy from the power of number line. Even though the universe may be infinite both spatially and temporally, it works the same way. The number works and number line diverges to infinity crossing infinite number of cycles of e like e to the power 11 e to the power 22, e to the power 33 and so on. I have derived the last two numbers from just a few physical constants such as speed of light, Planck constant, Newton's gravitational constant, Boltzmann constant, mass of electron, and Charles gas constant. Yes, you heard it right, Charles gas constant. The coincidence between the fine structure constant being half of the Charles ratio of an ideal gas is an intriguing numerical relationship that has kept me wait for nights. You need to be little imaginative to connect all the dot to complete the picture. The fine structure constant and the Charles ratio emerge from different realms of physics, and do not have a direct theoretical connection but number theoretically they are connected. The fine structure constant, denoted by alpha, is a fundamental constant in physics that characterizes the strength of the electromagnetic interaction between charged particles. It has a value close to 1 upon 137. The fine structure constant is dimensionless and plays a crucial role in various areas of physics, including quantum electrodynamics. On the other hand, the Charles ratio is a constant that arises from the ideal gas law. It relates the change in volume of an ideal gas to its change in temperature, at constant pressure, approximately. This ratio is close to 1 upon 273. Although Charles gas constant is not counted in fundamental constant, it should be considered more fundamental in the middle scale we live in. It is mathematically close the reciprocal of pi to the power 4 multiplied by Euler's number e, base of natural logarithm which I guess need no introduction. Can you imagine the circle out of it? If you too want lose your night's sleep then welcome to the world of both flammable and inflammable mathematics. By now if you think that you are listening to yet another random crackpot then I can understand your feeling, you are excused in advance. Even I die with a crackpot stigma even after 10 years of effort understanding numbers then also the whole science community are excused. As I am not trying to make any profit out of it, I am not going to take any shit that my haters may spit. One of the fundamental principles of scientific inquiry is that ideas and claims should be subject to scrutiny, experimentation, and peer review. This rigorous process helps ensure that scientific knowledge is reliable and based on evidence, preventing the proliferation of unfounded or erroneous ideas. However, this system can inadvertently create barriers for novel or unorthodox concepts that challenge prevailing paradigms. When scientific works are not given due recognition or dismissed solely because they are not immediately understood, several negative consequences can arise. First, it stifles intellectual curiosity and discourages researchers from exploring unconventional ideas. This can limit the diversity of perspectives and approaches within the scientific community, hindering breakthroughs and innovative discoveries. Second, it perpetuates a culture of conformity and orthodoxy, where researchers may be reluctant to deviate from established theories or methods. This can create a bias towards incremental rather than transformative advancements, as scientists fear professional consequences for exploring unconventional avenues. Third, it hampers scientific progress by discouraging interdisciplinary collaboration. Many groundbreaking discoveries have occurred at the intersection of different fields, where novel ideas from one domain may not be initially understood or appreciated by another. 
neglecting or dismissing these interdisciplinary endeavors can impede holistic understanding and limit the potential for ground-breaking discoveries. Furthermore, overlooking scientific works that are not immediately understood by the scientific community can have broader societal implications. Scientific research often addresses pressing societal challenges, such as climate change, disease prevention, or technological advancements. By disregarding unconventional ideas, we may miss out on potential solutions to these complex problems. To address this issue, it is crucial to foster an environment that encourages open-mindedness, intellectual curiosity, and respectful dialogue within the scientific community. Scientists should be encouraged to critically evaluate and engage with unconventional ideas, even if they challenge existing knowledge. Funding agencies, academic institutions, and scientific journals can play a pivotal role in promoting inclusivity, supporting interdisciplinary collaborations, and providing platforms for the dissemination of diverse scientific perspectives. Let us change the topic. Let's understand how these new mathematical jackpots of reals can lead us to groundbreaking discoveries in every field of applied science. Imaginary numbers, denoted as multiples of the imaginary unit I, are crucial in many areas of mathematics and physics. They are used extensively in complex analysis, quantum mechanics, electrical engineering, signal processing, and more. It would indeed be a groundbreaking discovery with far-reaching implications across various branches of science, mathematics, and technology if imaginary numbers could be integrated with the real number line. The integration of imaginary numbers with the real number line would lead to a more comprehensive and unified mathematical framework. It would allow for a deeper understanding of complex functions, such as exponential, trigonometric, and logarithmic functions, which play a vital role in various mathematical applications. The development of new mathematical Techniques and tools could arise, enabling more sophisticated modeling and analysis in diverse fields. In physics, the merger of imaginary and real numbers would have profound consequences. Quantum mechanics, a fundamental theory describing the behavior of particles at the microscopic level, heavily relies on complex numbers. Quantum mechanics, a cornerstone of modern physics, relies heavily on complex numbers and the concept of the wave function. The wave function describes the probabilistic behavior of quantum systems, such as electrons, atoms, and molecules. It provides information about the particle's position, momentum, and other physical properties. By extending the real number line, new insights into quantum phenomena and the behavior of subatomic particles could emerge. It may lead to enhanced mathematical formalism and a deeper understanding of wave-particle duality, superposition, and quantum entanglement. Imaginary numbers being brought down to the real number line, it would impact the mathematical framework of the wave function. Complex Numbers play a crucial role in representing the amplitude and phase of quantum states. By extending the real number line, it could introduce new mathematical techniques to describe and analyze quantum systems more comprehensively. General relativity, Einstein's theory of gravity, describes the fabric of spacetime as curved and influenced by mass and energy. If imaginary numbers were integrated into the real number line, it could potentially impact the mathematical framework of general relativity. New possibilities might arise for the analysis of complex space-time geometries, including those involved in black holes, gravitational waves, and the early universe. It could lead to novel insights into the relationship between gravity and quantum mechanics, an area that remains unresolved even today. The integration of imaginary numbers with the real number line would have practical implications for numerous technological applications. Complex numbers are crucial in electrical engineering, signal processing, control systems, and telecommunications. By extending the real number line, it would provide a more comprehensive mathematical framework for analyzing AC circuits. Complex numbers would continue to play a crucial role in representing voltage and current phases accurately. It would enable engineers to perform complex calculations involving impedance, reactance, and power factor more efficiently. This, in turn, would contribute to the design, analysis, and optimization of electrical circuits and systems. By extending the real number line, engineers and technologists could develop more sophisticated algorithms improved signal processing techniques, and advanced control systems. 
it could pave the way for more efficient digital communication, advanced image processing, and breakthroughs in artificial intelligence. Quantum computers rely on the principles of quantum mechanics and utilize quantum bits or qubits to perform computations. The mathematics associated with quantum computing involves complex linear algebra and quantum algorithms. Complex numbers are integral to representing quantum states, quantum gates, and quantum operations. If imaginary numbers were brought down to the real number line, it would impact the mathematical foundations of quantum computing. The use of complex numbers would remain essential for representing and manipulating quantum states, as well as performing quantum operations and simulations. Extending the real number line might lead to the development of new mathematical techniques and algorithms for quantum computations, enhancing the efficiency and capabilities of quantum computers. Moreover, the integration of imaginary numbers with the real number line could have implications for quantum error correction codes, which protect quantum information from decoherence and errors. The mathematical framework underlying error correction codes would likely continue to rely on complex numbers ensuring the reliable storage and manipulation of quantum information. The unification of real and imaginary numbers would foster interdisciplinary collaborations and cross-pollination of ideas across all branches of science. It would encourage researchers to explore new mathematical frameworks and develop novel approaches to understanding complex phenomena. This integration could have implications for fields such as chemistry, biology, materials science, and more, by providing enhanced mathematical tools for modeling and simulating intricate systems. Now let's talk about other major and minor unsolved number theory problems, I have given some minimal proofs in this paper. Why minimal? I just broke the ice a little bit, once the duality of number system and its oscillation around the newly discovered limit of 2 is understood then all these proofs nicely emerge from already proved prime number theorem itself, that's why I call those proofs minimal. The notion of the dual nature of numbers refers to the observation that prime numbers exhibit a fundamental dichotomy in their distribution. On one hand, primes are irregular and seemingly random, lacking any discernible pattern or formula for their occurrence. On the other hand, they exhibit certain statistical properties and trends that can be analyzed and understood through probabilistic methods. This dual nature emerges when considering the behavior of primes in relation to their density and spacing. The prime number theorem, formulated by Jacques Hadamard and Charles Jean de la Vallée Poussin independently, provides an estimation of the density of primes. It states that the number of primes less than a given value n is approximately n divided by the natural logarithm of n. However, despite this approximation of density, primes exhibit what appears to be a random distribution with irregular gaps between them. This irregularity is exemplified by prime gaps, which are the differences between consecutive primes. While the prime number theorem suggests the average gap between primes is approximately ln of n, primes can have both large and small gaps. The dual nature of numbers arises from this seemingly contradictory behavior. On one hand, primes are bounded by the prime number theorem, indicating a decrease in their density. As we move to larger numbers. On the other hand, primes exhibit a certain oscillatory behavior around a limit of 2. This means that despite the decreasing density, prime numbers continue to occur irregularly and unpredictably. In other words, dual nature of numbers oscillating around the limit of 2 makes it certain to give birth to new and newer primes at irregular intervals. Let's consider the problem of the infinitude of prime pairs, also known as the twin prime conjecture. The conjecture states that there are infinitely many prime numbers that differ by 2, such as, 3 and 5, 11 and 13, 17 and 19, and so on. To approach this problem using the prime number theorem and the dual nature of numbers, we can utilize probabilistic arguments and the statistical properties of primes. Here's a possible outline for a minimal proof, let n be an arbitrarily large number. We start by invoking the prime number theorem, which tells us that the number of primes less than a given. Value n is approximately n upon natural logarithm of n. Now if we take this asymptotic limit of prime numbers as if we are counting the zeta zeros, or more specifically complex numerical cycles, and consider this limit as the base for our logarithm of the arbitrarily large number then the result will be always greater than 2. 
As the limit shall be hall be always greater than 2 there shall be infinitely many twin primes with a prime gap of 2. Hence twin prime conjecture stands proved and it can be called as twin prime theorem. While this outline provides a general idea of how the prime number theorem and the dual nature of numbers can be applied to the twin prime conjecture, the same approach can be applied in solving Goldbach conjecture, proposed by Christian Goldbach in 1742, which states that every even integer greater than 2 can be expressed as the sum of two prime numbers. If not convinced think twice, thrice until it flashes the eureka moment for you, 4. More clarity please do not forget to refer my paper, there you will find more proof by words like this of almost all the number theory. Problems. On my return journey to finish the controversy of dual in unit, circle I used Hamilton's concept of quaternions in four-dimensional complex number system, and redefined imaginary number iota equals to be natural logarithm of two, and redefined negative logarithm in my newly invented simplex way. The idea of assigning a real value to an imaginary number was not new. In fact, it is a common technique used in electrical engineering and physics to represent complex numbers in the form of phases, a sinusoidal function of time. The real part of the phaser represents the amplitude of the sinusoid, while the imaginary part represents the phase angle. Redefined imaginary number iota equals to be natural logarithm of 2 makes everything become real directly without wasting much time in the eluded world of complex numbers. Just reimagine complex numbers in terms of unified family of simplex numbers unifying all variants of complex, hypercomplex. Numbers including dual and split complex numbers. Assigning a scale factor of powers of 10 for every complex part of complex and hyper. Complex numbers which was the height of my imagination and an interesting concept would allow us to represent complex numbers in a more intuitive way, similar to how we represent numbers in scientific notation. Based on my understanding of my own work on the connection between pi and powers of 10 I suggested a scale factor of increasing powers of 10 in realizing simplex numbers in a little biased way. However, it is important to note that these scale factors would not be unique, as there are many ways to assign different scale factors. The multiplication rule for complex numbers needed to simplify a bit to ensure that all of the properties complex turn simplex, logarithm are preserved. Overall, these are interesting ideas that could potentially simplify the representation and manipulation of complex numbers. However, they would require further study and analysis to determine their usefulness and feasibility. I am too tired to run further. Here I hand it over to the world. Whoever makes something out of my paper conquering the language barrier between a finance guy and the language of mathematics, language of latex, please pass on the information to the anchor in the relay race, we all are team players. If somebody wants to disprove Riemann hypothesis, he or she has to face my work although not viral but easily available in vixra.org a so-called crackpot site. If someone wants to prove it in altogether different way then also my request to him iha would be to cross-check my signature predictions also. The extended domain of factorials, the extended domain of zeta function, the quaternion connection to zeta zeros, the dual unit circle, the dual unit sphere etc. All these milestones will remain as my signature until my work get well accepted among the mathematicians. I hope this video has given you a glimpse into the fascinating world of number theory and the ongoing efforts to prove the Riemann hypothesis. Please have a look on my work from the link below and share it as many people you may think worthy. Thank you for watching, and happy exploring.